Algebra 2, 7.6a, Radical Equations and the Principle of Powers, and I have a theorem for you. All right, we're up to 16 previous videos for Chapter 7 now. I don't want anyone to get lost, so if you haven't seen the previous videos, you might want to check this video's description, watch the ones that you've missed or don't understand, and come back to this one. So any expression that contains a radical sign is a radical expression. And any equation that contains a radical sign is a radical equation. Just remember, equations have an equal sign and expressions don't. And if the equation a equals b is true, when we square both sides, we still get a true equation. We get a squared equals b squared. And if a equals b, anything we do to a that we do to b is going to make them equal each other, right? So here's our theorem. It's the principle of powers. For any natural number n, if a equals b is true, then a to the nth power equals b to the nth power is true. Remember, equivalent equations have the same solution sets, the same answers, okay? So my board is pretty full today. It's pretty jam-packed, so look at this. I hope you're going to be able to follow me on this. we got quite a bit to cover. We can solve radical equations by using the principle of powers theorem. So if we have the square root of x minus 3 equals 4, we can isolate that square root of x by adding 3 to each side of the equation. That's the easy stuff, right? We did that a long time ago in Algebra 1. So by adding a 3 to each side, we're going to end up with the square root of x equals 7. And we know that we can take that radical sign off and put a second power over this 7, right? which means x is going to equal 49, and square root of x equals 7. So what's the, what is 7? It's 7 times 7, right? That's 49. We've got the square root of x equals a negative 3. Using that principle of powers rule, we can square both sides of the equal sign. That'll remove the radical sign from this x, and that'll give us a negative 3 times negative 3, which gives us a positive 9. We can check it, which is really important. I know a lot of people want to skip this, but this is what's going to screw you up on tests. Because if you don't check it, you're going to think, okay, I got the right answer, I got a 9. But when we plug this back into the square root of x equals negative 3, that means the square root of 9 is a negative 3. And nope, 9 doesn't work because the principal square root of a number is never negative. Okay? So this equation has no solution. And don't get tricked on a test. Make sure, even if you use scratch paper or whatever, check it. Make sure you did it right, because you cannot have a negative as a principal square root, okay? All right, let's see if you can follow me in all my mishmash on this board. To solve a radical equation, we isolate the radical term to one side of the equation. So if our equation is x equals the square root of x plus 7 plus 5, we isolate this radical. We, so we add a negative 5 to each side of the equation, and that's going to give us an x minus 5 equals the square root of x plus 7. We created zero pairs here, didn't we? Additive inverse. Now we've got this x minus 5 equals the square root of x plus 7. We use that principle of powers rule to square both sides of the equal sign. We get x minus 5 times x minus 5, and we can FOIL that. And on this side, this square helped us remove that radical sign, so now we just have an x plus 7. So now we FOIL this, and we get x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25 equals that x plus 7. We can combine those like terms and get a minus 10 there. And we need to add a negative x and a positive 7 to each side of the equation so that we can set it to 0. We're going to use the principle of zero products here. And the only way to set it to equal 0 is to take away an x and add a 7. So that ends up becoming a 0. What happens on this side is we get x squared equals 11x plus 32. And we need to factor that. When we factor this trinomial, we get x minus 9 times x minus 2, and it's set to equal 0 using that principle of zero products. For the x minus 9 equals 0, we can add 9 to each side of the equation, 
create a zero pair here and get x equals 9. We do the same thing on this side. We add a 2 to each side, create a zero pair and get x equals 2. Now we can check it and take our original equation and put 9 in wherever the x was and we find out that yes, 9 equals 9. But on this side, when we put the 2 in and substitute it in, it isn't a solution to the equation. It's an extraneous root. We end up with 2 equals 8, and no, that can't happen, okay? Extraneous means it's irrelevant or unrelated. So that's an extraneous root. That's not a solution. The 9 is, the 2 isn't, okay? A radical term may remain after we square both sides. The same procedures can be used again when, we, when this happens. So here's our equation. We've got the square root of 2x minus 5 equals 1 plus the square root of x minus 3. Now, we've already got a radical that's isolated on one side of the equation. We can square both sides to remove a radical sign. This is going to remove the radical sign from here, and we're just going to get a 2x minus 5. On this one, we can FOIL this, and what happens when we FOIL this, and yeah, you can FOIL even with the radical sign in there, we get a 1 plus square root of x minus 3 plus square root of x minus 3 plus 2 square root of x minus 3. See? We're going to get two of these guys. We can put them in parentheses with a little square sign like that so we can remove our radical sign. And now we can combine these like terms, okay? So we got a 1 plus a negative 3. That's going to give us a negative 2 here. So now we've got x minus 2 instead of 1 plus x minus 3. We drop him down. Now we need to isolate that remaining radical, this guy right here. So we're going to take away an x and add a 2. Take away an x, add a 2. Create a 0 pair here. And we get x minus 3 on this side equals 2 times the square root of x minus 3. So now what we're going to do is the same thing we did before. We're going to repeat our steps. We're going to square both sides of the equal sign again. We square this side. We square this side. That's going to remove that radical sign. So now we've got... 2 times 2, which is 4, and 2 times the square root of x, which is going to give us x minus 3 in parentheses here. And we need to FOIL this side and distribute this side. We FOIL this one, and we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. We distribute this side and get 4x minus 12. We need to set it to equal 0 again. So we need to move him over here so that this side equals 0. So we're going to take away a 4x and add a 12. See, we're using opposite signs. Then, when we do that, on this side, we get an x squared minus 10x plus 21, and it's going to equal 0. Now we can factor this trinomial again. Same steps. We factor it, and we get an x minus 7 times x minus 3 equals 0. Now we're going to use that principle of zero products again. We've got them to e set to equal zero, so we're going to add 7 and add 7. Whoops, I'm missing my add 7 here, aren't I? So now we're going to have an x plus 7 on this side, and then we're going to have an x equals a plus 3 on this side. Now we can plug in a 7 and a 3 to check them. We plug in the 7 to our original equation, and... We find out that 14 minus 5 is a 9, so we have square root of 9, which is a 3, and 1 plus the square root of 4 is a 1 plus a 2, that's a 3, that's a yes. So 7 is an answer. We plug in the 3, and we get 2 times 3 minus 5, that's a 6 minus 5, that's a square root of 1. 1 times 1 is 1, so our answer is 1 here. We get a 3 minus 3. And that's a square root of 0, so that's a 0. And then we have 1 on this side. So yeah, 7 and 3 are both solutions. So this was quite busy. And in the textbook examples, it didn't go into this much detail. So I wanted to go into as much detail as possible because sometimes when you look at the textbook, you say, huh, how did they get to that next step? Because they, they cut out some steps thinking, oh, they should know how to do this. And it seems like they're just skipping over and not showing every single step, okay? So that's why I wanted to show every single step, all right? I'm missing one here where I actually foiled and then combined it to a negative 6x. But I figured you could figure that out, okay? I'm hoping you could, all right? So just remember 
that you might have to repeat what you did. You might have to repeat your procedures, all right? And remember that principal square roots are never negative, all right? And you could end up with an extraneous root where there's no answer. So that's why it's important to check. You don't want to be tricked on a test and say, oh, yeah, I know the answer is a 9 or a 2 when you're not sure you didn't check it, okay? So don't be worried if you have to repeat your steps of squaring both sides again and foiling again, okay? And don't forget that you can use the principle of zero products to set it to equal zero to check it, okay? Our next video is going to be 7.6b. We're going to actually solve some word problems that involve ras rational equations. I'm going to add this one to the Algebra 2 playlist like I always do. And 11.9 from Algebra 1, we did rational, um, I mean uh, radical equations. So you might want to check that one out. And... I'm going to put my rules for exponents video in this description along with links to the previous videos for chapter 7. And I know this was a lot I threw at you today, but hopefully by going through every single step, you were able to understand what we did, okay? All right. Keep trying. I'm proud of you for watching YouTube videos for math, all right? And don't forget, you can support me on Patreon.com and through uh, YouTube fan funding. There's a for YouTube fan funding. You just go to my homepage and you'll see the link to click on. And if I've helped you, it would be nice if you could help me in return. I've got some uh, vet bills that are coming up that I don't know if I can handle. So I'll see you next video. Bye.